Hello again. I spoke yesterday about the labour camps which operated in Britain during the Great Depression of the 1930s and mentioned in passing that conditions in them were similar and probably not much worse to those which existed in Dachau concentration camp at about the same time. This caused quite a few comments which expressed incredulity that I would make such a comparison, and so I thought I would clear up any misunderstanding. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the very expression concentration camp became associated with places such as Auschwitz, which was of course a death camp rather than a concentration camp. What is a concentration camp? A concentration camp is simply a place where civilian prisoners are held indefinitely without being charged with any offence or brought to trial. Some such places are brutal, others no worse than an ordinary prison. There have been a number of such camps in Britain and the last one didn't close until 1975. It was my mentioning Dachau in the same breath as camps in this country, which seem to shock many of those commenting here. So let's have a look at Dachau and see how bad it was in the 1930s. Remember, I'm not talking about the situation at the end of the war where many people were dying all over Germany and the conditions in camps like Dachau were like something out of Dante's Inferno. I'm talking about Dachau when it opened and as it was operating during the 1930s. On the 20th of March 1933, the office of Heinrich Himmler, who was chief of police at Munich at that time, issued a press release about a new facility which be, was being set up near Munich. Communist functionaries, Reichsbanner, and Marxist functionaries who threaten the security of the state will be assembled here. Leaving individual communist functionaries in the courthouse jails is not possible for the long term without putting too much strain on the apparatus of the state. Life in the new camp did not sound particularly disagreeable. The Dachau camp according to the press release, consists of over 20 one- to two-storey stone buildings, each of which can hold 200 to 250 men. At first, the occupancy of the camp will gradually increase to 2,500 men and will possibly be expanded to 5,000 men later. A labour service detachment recently prepared the barrack for the first 200 men and secured it for the time being with a barrier of triple barbed wire. The first job of the camp inmates will be to restore the other stone buildings which are very run down. Once that is accomplished, they will be led out in small groups of about 50 men into the countryside, where extensive land cultivation projects wait to be implemented. Perhaps later, some of the camp inmates will be offered the possibility of settling here. Now, that's what I meant when I said that it didn't sound all that different to the labour camps running in Britain at that time. A lot of the work involved digging ditches, and chopping down trees, sawing logs and so on. When they mentioned the possibility of inmates being offered the chance of settling there, this indicated, and I'll go back to this point in a minute, that these people were not being locked up forever. Most of them only spent a few months in Dachau. The first thing to bear in mind is that although people were sent to the camp, at least to begin with for political offences, most did not spend all that long there. The idea was to give them a taste of hard physical work and strict discipline, so that when released they would take good care not to do anything which would render them liable to be returned to the camp. In other words, they would stop being Marxist agitators and simply settle down and get jobs like everybody else, They'd soon lost their um, taste for revolution after a spell in a camp like that. Conditions in the camp were spartan, but not all that much more harsh than in similar concentration camps in Britain, say during the First World War. 
It is true that in the mid-1930s there were a few deaths at Dachau, but we're talking very small numbers, no more than the number of men killed in similar camps in this country. Let me give a couple of examples. In the summer of 1914, many Austrians and Germans living in this country were arrested and detained in a network of concentration camps. These were actually called concentration camps. This isn't something I'm making up. The um, sign at the front of these places said so-and-so concentration camp. There was no secret about it. At Douglas Concentration Camp on the Isle of Man, the prisoners staged a protest on November 19th, 1914, and this was met with a volley of rifle fire. 34 shots were fired at the prisoners and five men killed. A similar situation arose at Camberley Concentration Camp in Surrey that same month, which also resulted in injuries and deaths. In other words, there were a few deaths at Dachau in the mid-1930s, but these were like the ones in British camps, not organised, but just haphazard massacres. As far as we know, conditions in Dachau and another concentration camp opened in Germany at about the same time, Sonnenberg, were not any harsher than any of the camps in Britain. British people visited both Dachau and Sonnenberg and brought back favourable reports. One person who visited Dachau concentration camp in 1936 was very favourably impressed by what he saw. This was former British Prime Minister David Lloyd George. He talked enthusiastically of the virtues of good honest labour and spoke of the men he had seen stripped to their waists who were digging ditches around the camp. Lloyd George thought Dachau was a very good thing indeed and something that might profitably be copied in Britain. He wasn't the only British visitor to the German concentration camps who found the treatment of the inmates quite acceptable. On the 4th of October 1933, the Manchester Guardian, that's the forerunner of today's Guardian, until 1959 it was the Manchester Guardian, I still call it that sometimes. Anyway, the Manchester Guardian published a letter from Brigadier General R.B.D. Blakeney, who had just recently returned from a visit to Germany. Brigadier Blakeney had on the 13th of September been shown round the Sonnenberg concentration camp, which was not far from the Polish border. The brigadier found everything at Sonnenberg to be eminently satisfactory. He wrote, The prisoners do not appear to be ill-treated, so much so that three who were just being released looked clean, healthy and much improved by their regime of daily baths, regular meals, physical drill and discipline. As far as Brigadier Blakeney was concerned, a couple of months in a concentration camp was roughly comparable to a spell in the army, an experience which was fundamentally beneficial to those subjected to it. In fact, the descriptions that Lloyd George, Brigadier Blakeney and many others at that time give of the German concentration camps is practically indistinguishable from what unemployed men in the British labour camps would have been familiar with. Physical exercise, discipline, regular meals, daily baths and roughing it a little in wooden huts. Who could possibly object to such a regime? I must draw the attention of viewers to that remark of Brigadier Blakeney about three men being released from Sonnenberg. Since the camp only opened in April that year and he wrote his letter to the Guardian in October, those men couldn't have spent more than five or six months at Sonnenberg concentration camp. This was fairly typical at that time, that a few months would be enough to persuade people they didn't wish to fight against the system anymore. Remember I'm talking now about the 1930s, not during the Second World War, when things certainly changed dramatically for the worse. As I say, conditions in Dachau at that time were no harder in general than those in British concentration camps and labour camps during and after the Great War. Viewers might also care to look into the so-called home office work camps where conscientious objectors were sometimes sent to work on the land during the First World War. Believe me, these were a lot grimmer than Dachau. Memory fades though, and it's fashionable today to sanitise Britain's history of running concentration camps and pretend that it was all those beastly Germans doing that kind of thing. 
When discussing concentration camps, we must always detach them from the idea of genocide and mass murder and remember that the expression itself is quite neutral with no suggestion at all of ill-treatment or murder.